A stock buyback is when a company buys its own shares from shareholders. It is a way for the company to pay money to them. People think that instead of giving money away to greedy shareholders, companies should instead put that money to work by funding long-shot projects or improving employee payouts. So in this video we'll talk about it, and also look at what the Congress is proposing to do here. It is believed that because investors and shareholders are these rich funds and high net worth individuals, while employees are not high net worth individuals, why not improve the latter's well-being, instead of giving money away to those who are already flush with cash. Also, many people think that stock buybacks are wrong because they help the rich evade taxes. What do the corporate finance people say? That it is tax efficiency and not tax evasion. There are two ways for companies to pay their shareholders. One is dividend and the other is share buybacks. Dividend is when the company just gives money to whoever holds its shares. Shareholders who receive dividends pay income tax on it. For the tax authority, it is as if the individual had an additional income, and that is taxable as one. When paying a dividend, the company does not receive anything in return from the shareholders. Share buyback is when a company buys its own shares. In effect, money moves from the company to the shareholder, just like a dividend. Shareholders may pay lower taxes on the money received because the tax is paid on the gain. If they had bought the share for $10 and gave it to the company for $11, tax will be paid on the gain, which is $1 here. The rate of tax will depend on how soon the shareholder sold the shares. If they sold after holding for a year, then long-term capital gains tax rate will be applicable, which is lower than short-term capital gains tax rate. All this is to say that share buybacks are tax efficient. The other thing that the corporate finance people say is that the company may not be best placed to take a call on a long-shot project. Money in the hand of investors may have a better chance of finding its way to a startup which may be better at solving that long-shot problem. Maybe the large company is good at doing things at scale and pushing down costs. It can give large orders to its vendors, extract a good price, hire qualified and experienced people to manage a complex supply chain, set up and run large manufacturing facilities efficiently, buy lots of ad space cheaply, and have a wide distribution network to sell its products in volume. The company has built its organization to do those things well. Doing R&D may ask for a different set of skills and a much different setup. What happens if the company messes it up? It is then not unusual for its stock price to go down. If things get bad enough, the company may have to scale down its operations, even lay off employees to cut costs. There may be other poor outcomes associated with mismanagement in unfamiliar areas. A better way of doing this is for the company to return excess funds to shareholders, who can then decide for themselves which new projects and risks they want to take. The gripe that stock buybacks move money towards wealthy investors and away from the employees works equally well for dividends. Both stock buyback and dividends are equivalent on that count. Both are methods of paying shareholders of the company. Can we do something about the tax? Yes, why not just tax stock buybacks differently, and the Congress may be thinking about it. Here's a recent article in Bloomberg. Two senior Democratic senators proposed a 2% tax on corporate stock buybacks in an effort to boost investment and reduce what they termed as tax avoidance. The plan, released by Senate Finance Committee Chairman Ron Wyden of Oregon and Senate Banking Committee Chairman Sherrod Brown of Ohio, comes as Democratic lawmakers assemble a raft of tax measures to help pay for a $3.5 trillion budget bill that contains the bulk of President Joe Biden's longer-term economic agenda. Rather than investing in their workers, megacorporations used the windfall from Republicans' 2017 tax cuts to juice their stock prices and reward their wealthiest investors and their executives through massive stock buybacks, Wyden said in a statement on the proposal on Friday. The 2% excise tax on stock buybacks pitched by Wyden and Brown wouldn't apply to transactions for funding an employee pension plan or those below a de minimis threshold, according to a statement released by Brown's office. Sure, why not? An excise tax sounds like an idea. So that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, 
please give a like and hit that subscribe button as that helps that channel out a whole lot. Thanks and I'll see you in the next one.